this is what bushcraft is all about, being able to thrive in, in the natural environment. I've managed to make fire, find food, I could build shelf and be quite happy for a few days here. It's a home from home really. I love it. So fresh and tender as well. In the first part of the film you saw me collecting the dry ass saddle for polyporous squasmosis. And I want to show you the whole process from harvesting it to cooking it and eating it so you've got a good idea of what to do with it. Uh, give you a bit of better view so you can have a look and see exactly what it is. Let's just get this zoomed in. And there we go. You can see why it's called pheasant speck. These nice speckles here. And also why it's called a dryad saddle. It's saddle shaped. And dryads being elves of the wood. So you can see it's, it's fairly easily to identify. In terms of all the mushrooms out there, this is one of the more easier ones. And it's a really good beginner starter mushroom. And you notice that it's got paws and not gills. And you'll often find it on brackets. On um, you'll often find it on tree stumps. Okay. So when I collected the uh, the dry ass saddle, I also collected some ramsons or the unopened flower of ramsons or wild garlic. I'll just show you these close up so you can see as well. There we go. These are just the flower tips. We've also got some jack by the hedge. Or hedge garlic. <laughs> Show you these. I'm trying to get you a nice leaf so you can see the shape of it. These aren't actually a true garlic. When you break the leaf and crush it up a bit, there's a chemical reaction which gives the garlic flavour. And then, I've got some dandelion flowers. To give it a bit of colour. And then once I've cooked this all together and I've included the garlic, I'm going to have stinky breath. So I've also picked some mint. I'm going to make a mint tea to wash it all down with. You often hear when you're going through through YouTube that oh you, it's no it's no good to eat dry saddle it's tough and it's really leathery but what I found is if you slice it thinly and cook it decently it's lovely it's like portobello mushroom or anything else like that it's probably one of the best mushrooms out there so now there's preparation for cooking what I'm looking for is any kind of old bits. Or anything with a bit of mould on or anything which doesn't which looks gone past its best. I'll just check that away. It cuts really thin. Let's see. This is nice, it's quite a small young tender one, so I'm just slicing through it really easy. It doesn't doesn't feel tough at all. Just do some nice slices. One Another thing about identifying it is, it smells like melon. So if you think you've found dry ass saddle, smell it. It has a really distinctive melon smell. And I'll just show you what it looks like sliced open. It's just like any other mushroom. I'll cut these bits a bit smaller. I don't think I'm going to need a huge amount of these. So if you pick a fair amount like this, you think you've probably got too much for a, for a meal, 
They can last a few days in the fridge, quite comfortably, like any other mushroom. You can also think about dehydrating, but they don't dehydrate very well, they just crumble. Which can be added to stock soup or other things, but you, you won't get the same consistency as this if you rehydrate. So what we want to do first is heat up the frying pan and it's an electric cooker and I've got it on number four. Put a fair amount of olive oil in there. Then add the mushrooms. Like any other mushroom, I'm going to let it warm up and sweat a bit before I start cooking it properly. Give it a few minutes. So now I'll start to warm the mushrooms up a bit. And it's already making a lovely mushroom smell. Just give it a stir over to coat in olive oil and to heat up. Really smells of food already. It smells delicious. Give it a few more minutes. One thing you will notice with dry air saddle is it takes a lot longer to cook than normal mushroom. It seems to cook really, really slowly. Now a normal mushroom will be done in a couple of minutes. Going to add a handful of peas for good measure. What you might notice is giving up loads and loads of water now. Just let it cook a bit more. Oh, it smells good. It smells like wild mushroom too. Let it cook for a bit longer. See, it's releasing all the water. I'm just going to give it a little bit longer and then I'll, I'll pour off the water. It's no use to us at all. Now you can see it's, it's given out loads and loads of water. So it's time to get rid of that and do the final cooking. Just pour it off, that's all it is. Time to cook. Turn the heat down a bit because it's cooked. You just want to add flavour now. Add a knob of butter. Some salt. And some pepper. And give it a stir. Whilst that's finishing off, we want to prep the last ingredients. Here's the jack by the hedge. Just tear it up. That's all it takes. You don't add it while it's cooking, because it'll just destroy the flavours instantly. You add it when you take, take the mushrooms off the heat. Then we take the rounds and flower heads as well. Just going to split those open to give it a bit more colour. Now be white inside. Do that. Wow, strong smell of garlic now.
and we'll just take some of the dandelion flower and a quick look to make sure we've got no insects in there. And just trim some of that up for colouring. And I'll just have a quick look at the mint, make sure it's clean and tidy. Right, let's see how our cooking's going. Mm -hmm. So this is done now, and you can see how much it's reduced down for the loss of moisture. So we take it off the heat, turn off the hob. Then we add hedge garlic, the ramsons, and the dandelion. And give it a good stir. Now it's ready to clear. And the way I like to have it is on toast. Just simple. And there's the finished product. There's the finished meal. So while I'm tucking into that, I'm just going to chop up and prepare some of the mint for the drink afterwards. Put it in here to soak for a bit. Lovely. So once you start to pick up a few foraging skills, you can go out there and you can find real rich variety of food which is thoroughly enjoyable and a lot of people are reluctant to pick mushrooms because they're scared that they'll, they'll die or they'll, or they'll poison themselves which is a fair comment but there are quite a few out there which are easily identifiable and taste delicious and are really worth the effort and it's opened up a whole new world to me mm. Delicious. Absolutely enjoyable. So I hope you enjoyed the, the short video and it's encouraged you to go out there and try the mushrooms yourself. And if you do, let me know. If you've got any of the recipes, also let me know. Thanks for watching.